Okay, we're going to talk about uh, this 3-1 for geometry. We're going to talk about pairs of lines and angles. Maybe we have some uh, perpendicular lines, maybe some parallel lines, maybe some skew lines, maybe just have some intersecting lines. So we're going to start off with a couple of postulates. Again, just things we already know, but we're just going to identify them in case we have to use them uh, in a proof for some reason. And I don't know why we we're doing that. There we go. And so we're going to start with 3-1 or 3.1. Okay, and 3.1 is the parallel postulate. Okay, and the parallel whoop, and the parallel postulate simply states that if you've got a line and a point that's not on the line, then there's exactly one line through the point parallel to the given line. Okay, so that sounds great, but let's just identify it. Um, let's say we have a point and a line. So I'm going to draw the line first. And let's say I draw the point here. There's only one way uh, that I could draw a perpendicular line or a perpendicular line segment to, from that point to that line. And that's just like that. It, only one direction that I can do it. Um, obviously, I mean, we can look at this a couple of different ways. I can just show if I put it over here, that's not 90 degrees, that's not 90 degrees, that's not, that's not, and you get my point. Um, so there's only one place we can do that, and that's what 3.1 states. And so the second one is 3.2. And that's the perpendicular postulate. Oh, let me go back. I, um, some of you might be asking, well, that doesn't say anything's parallel. If I were to draw uh, a line through my point, then that now creates a whoop, that now creates a parallel line that's also drawn through that point. So there we go. That's that gets the parallel postulate. Now let's look at the perpendicular postulate. Remember the word perpendicular means two lines that intersect to form a 90 degree angle. Perpendicular postulate. As I sound everything out. Still got a little of that head crud. Um, so excuse my voice for now. It is getting a little bit better. Okay, so the perpendicular postulate says if there's a line, these are all found on page 115 by the way, if there's a line and a point not on the line, then there's exactly one line to the point perpendicular to the given line. So I think that's what I just read for the first one. So if you rewound, you probably heard me say that I forgot to draw that parallel line on the first one. So that's my mistake. So let's do the same thing on this one. Um, we would then have a point, and then there's only one place where we can draw this perpendicular. So just take everything that I said on that first one and apply it to this one. And so that's our only 90 degrees, the only thing that we can get from that point. So now we're going to look at some relationships of some uh, intersecting lines. So let's just say I have um, not necessarily intersecting lines, but let's say I have something like that. And then from these lines, I have what's called a transversal. And a transversal is just the line that cuts through them. Okay, it transverses through those lines. What is formed are eight angles. And those eight angles um, have relationships and uh, they are labeled specifically. We know that two and three and one and four, we know that those are vertical angles. We know that one and two, and those aren't the only ones, I was just mentioning a couple 
And we know that 1 and 2, 2, 4, 4, 3, 3, 1, those are all linear pairs. So they are supplementary and share um, an adjacent side. The two angles share an adjacent side. But now we're going to learn some different relationships. So if I were to look at angle, um, angle 2 and angle 6, Okay, angle two, oop, and, not und, and angle six, okay, those are called corresponding angles. I don't want to put equal there. Angle two and six are corresponding. I'll just put my little angles sign. Two and six are corresponding. They're both on the same side of the transversal, but one of them's on the outside and one of them's on the inside, which means that four and eight are also corresponding. And on the other side, that would make one and five. and 3 and 7. Okay, so 2 and 6, 4 and 8, 1 and 5, and 3 and 7 are what's known as corresponding angles. And so just for space, so I don't have to redraw this, um, since you've already got that wrote down, or you might want to pause real quick and get that done, because I'm going to erase these. And so we're going to move on to our next relationship. And so the next one we're going to get are alternate interior angles. And these are the angles that are inside. Okay, they're inside the two lines that are not a transversal. And they're on opposite sides or alternate sides of each other. So 4 and 5 are alternate interior angles and 3 and 6 are alternate interior angles. So, angle 4 and angle 5 and then angle 3 and angle 6. Those are called alternate interior okay so now that I talk about alternate interior you're probably thinking well there's probably alternate exterior and you are correct so let's go to our eraser go ahead and pause that and get those now let's go to our eraser. We'll erase that. Um, I actually, let's see if I can get back to getting those off of there. There we go. Okay, so that's back to our original one. So now alternate exterior, those are going to be on opposite sides of the transversal, except they will be on the outside of the two line, the two lines. So one and eight, I didn't like the little and that I used in the last one, an angle two and seven, whoop, and seven, those are alternate exterior. I have no idea why I just wrote so big. 
1 and 8, and 2 and 7. And our final one is going to be consecutive. So go ahead and pause and get that wrote down. Okay, so our next ones are called consecutive interior, which means they're on the inside. However, they are on, whoop, they are on the same side of the transversal. So 4 and 6 and 3 and 5. And so those are called whoop, consecutive interior. And so those are four new angle relationships that we haven't discussed before, but don't forget the ones that we did have. We still have verticals. We still have um, linear pairs. And that is chapter three. Section 1, Pairs of Lines and Angles.